Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build. Now we are time-lapse building a survival games map. Now if you want to check out this being built live, you can go over to twitch.tv forward slash yogscast where I'm building it right now, albeit a bit slower. But if you want to catch up with where we are on the live stream, you can watch this video and brace yourself for awesome because we're building a pretty kick-ass survival games map that eventually I want to get everybody in the Yogs cast to play together. So let's do it. Right, now a bit of background before we actually get into the building. I'm going to create different islands, floating disks. They're going to be connected by bridges and all kinds of waterfalls and, and different ways to get around. Basically, the whole thing is going to be one big map with different themes on different islands. Now, I want to give you guys the opportunity to suggest things or even to donate on the stream and basically have your name be a part or your legacy be a part of the survival games map. So while we're playing it, we can kind of go past a graveyard, perhaps, where we'll see John Smith's name and Max Killer Destroyer or whatever your name it is, whatever you want put in. If you kind of donate to the stream, we'll try and get you in there in some way, shape or form, whether you're a colossal statue or whether you're just like a little cat or a wolf at the side of the side of the action. Now, what is the most important part of a survival games map, I hear you ask? And the answer to that is, I think, the cornucopia, or rather, the spawn. This is where you start, and that's what we're going to be crafting in this episode of Let's Build. Now, the problem with using, and I've said this before, the problem with using World Edit Sphere Brushes is that it's very clear that you've created big blobs of stone. And, and it kind of looks not very natural. So there's a smooth tool with World Edit that we've used to smooth off the edges of what's going to be our Survival Islands cornucopia. Now, what I want is very similar to my one of my favorite survival games movies, The Hunger Games. One of my favorite movies from that was the one where they all start out in the water and they have to swim at the start. I think that's a really good idea. It really kind of throws the competitors into a kind of like a, like a panic because, oh my God, who expected them to be in like a river or on a lake? So it's, it's a pretty cool way of doing it. And I wanted to recapture that and recreate it here. Now you saw me using sand earlier, and what I was going to do is, because sand is a great tool to use as a brush, because it falls, it obeys gravity, and what you can do is afterwards, you can just change the sand into dirt or grass with a simple command. And now you can see here, the shaders we're using are really beautiful in this mod pack. It's not really a proper mod pack, it's just got a few things to make the game look a bit nicer, but this water looks simply stunning. We're also using something called Better Foliage to make the trees look a bit more fuzzy around the edges to give them a bit more prickle. And also Better Foliage adds a layer to grass that makes grass look a bit busy as well. But here you can see we've got a small lake in the middle here and I'm going around the edges tidying things up and adding trees. I wanted a bit more structure and architecture though to go into this island. So what we're doing is we're creating a man-made cliff here on the edge of the lake here. And what we're gonna have is a waterfall drifting off of this. But I'm just using stone sphere brushes at the moment to create this kind of artificial cliff. And then smoothing it off, oh, there it goes with the rain. And then smoothing off the cliff with the smooth tool to make it look a bit less kind of ballsy. So yeah, I smooth off the stone a bit. But I think what I do is I try the naturalize command. And what naturalize does is it adds two layers of dirt and yeah, here we go, it adds two layers of dirt and one layer of grass on top of everything inside a region. It's a good way of making things look natural because out in the world, when you spawn a regular Minecraft world, what usually happens is you get two layers of dirt and layer of grass on top and everything below that is stone. Unfortunately though, in practice, it can oftentimes look a bit ugly and a bit out of place, but I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. What we'll need to do though is trim away some of that grass underneath where the water's coming down. Now water can be a real pain to sculpt because it has a mind of its own a lot of the time and we don't want it to do what water would naturally do. We want the water to come away from the cliff a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a little bit of an overhang at the top and clear a path for the water to fall down. I also want it to hit like a, like a stone ledge on the way to look like it's properly cascading over this stone cliff. And that's what we've got here. We've got, kind of got like a split with the water kind of coming down on the left there as well. And there you go. Oh, doesn't that look good? The water looks like jelly almost, the way it kind of shakes and shimmers in the light. It's a beautiful thing to behold. Absolutely stunning. 
But what I also want to do is I want to think to myself, well, where does water come from? In the real world, what happens is water kind of rains down on mountains that trickles down and creates streams that turn slowly into rivers as they combine and then they go into the sea and they make a sea. Wow. Or a lake or whatever. So what I want is a small sky island or a couple of sky islands above this main sky island, which are kind of collecting water and dripping the water down to create this waterfall. It's still not very accurate because, you know, rain doesn't create that much water on an island this size. But I think it's a cool feature and a cool thing to add just to have this water coming out from from seemingly just the sky, just like raining down a torrent of waterfall. So I've got this small little island up here. I'm carving out a path for the water to take as it drips down. And then adding some trees to make it look like a proper sky island. And of course some bone meal on the grass to populate that. And then it was time to put down the water and watch it drip down. Oh yeah, doesn't that look really cool? But I don't want it to just go straight down. I want it to hit another smaller sky island on the way, which is what this is. And then there you go, adding again dirt on top of that, turning it to grass. And I'm not sure if there's enough room for a tree on there. Probably not, because it's quite small. But we will add some trees to the top of that cliff. Oh yeah, now this looks really cool. I can imagine in the actual heat of battle, people jumping out into the lake, swimming over to the waterfall, and then swimming up the waterfall as an avenue to escape. Now a good thing we have to think about is where to put chests, where to put secret things for people to find in this world and I think actually having this waterfall is a good way of having people explore that maybe swim up that and find some treasure at the top maybe a powerful weapon a bow some armor or maybe even just an easter egg or a button that activates a trap the world is our oyster when it comes to uh, things to add to this to liven up the game now the trees I'm adding here I'm using the around the outside of the island that you see the trees I've already put down I used the big tree tool from world edit it's good it gives you a very very kind of specific type of tree that helps you have a consistent feel sometimes when you build a tree in minecraft you never know what you're going to get you put down a sapling it could be huge it could be tiny but a trick that you guys mentioned with me and shared with me and what i want to share with you now again is to guarantee yourself a big tree in minecraft the best thing to do is to build a four high wall of stone all around the sapling. That way, whenever you spam bone meal on the sapling, you force the tree to only grow when it can clear that wall. And what that does is it creates, usually, a nice, big, amazing tree with sprawling branches and some beautiful effects of leaves. Now, one thing I wanted to do as well is add some lighting. We want a kind of semi-natural feel to our lights as well that we're adding. So that ruled out sea lanterns, which look okay, but not in our texture pack, which at the moment is actually, you might not believe this, but this is actually vanilla texture pack at the moment, which honestly, in this texture pack looks pretty good. But you can see we've put around a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns with fence posts, and then at the base of the fence posts, we've used a concrete wall section just to give it a bit more foundation. It makes it look good. Now we tried switching it out for all kinds of things like redstone lamps with daylight sensors, hatches on the side, and, uh, and sea lanterns and they were cool tricks but none of them looked as good as the basic fence posts with jack-o'-lanterns on each side so what I did was I copy and pasted a bunch of those around and I rotated that selection as well and copy and pasted some jack-o'-lantern lamps the other way at different locations now also to add a bit of height to the outside of our lake start, I've added a couple more hills, a couple more hills made out of stone. Now it's really important actually when you put down the first layer of stone to get it right then. Because once you've started to add grass, it becomes much more difficult in future to add even more. You can see me again here using the sand trick, because sand obeys gravity, to set down a layer of sand that I'll enter to dirt. There you go, bam. And then I use the green command to turn the top layer of that dirt into greened up kind of grass. And now using exactly the same technique, I come over to the other small island and do exactly the same thing. Oh yeah, and now with some trees added on top, this is looking exactly like I want it to. And again, going around with bone meal to add a populated layer of kind of rough grass, 
red, white, yellow, and sometimes blue flowers around the edge of this lake. Now, it's important with bone meal, you can think to yourself, right, I'm putting down a layer of grass and flowers now, so I've got to put bone meal everywhere. Try and just add plops here and there. Oh, and here we go, the final sweep around our starting Cornucopia Island. Look at that water. Looks almost like a crystal prism reaching into the sky. Such an epic looking waterfall there for the starter island. I want the players to launch up out of their tubes at the start and just feel the fear. When I set the game mode to nighttime when I, and when I toggle the rain, you can just see how these lanterns glow. And don't they look really amazing? They really kind of capture the feel that I want for this map. They look absolutely glorious. Now, one of the things that I want to change and what I'm going to change in the next live stream that we do is what kind of texture pack that we're using. I told you guys that we collect a, a whole bunch and what we'll do is we'll try them all. We'll take a vote on what you guys want to see. Although I am partial towards vanilla because honestly, it looks really good with these shaders. Plus, everybody knows what vanilla textures look like. What I'll do is I'll try and create some islands, or I probably have already created some islands, some base islands for us to work on next episode, because I have no idea where we're going to go next time with regards to this build. But I'd like to get some islands in place for next time. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit like, favorite and subscribe. And don't forget too, to also drop by the stream and watch us make this map live. And if you donate, it's your chance to contribute to the map directly and get your name immortalized in survival games glory. But until next time, guys, take care.